everyone. So today I'm going to present you um, some of the uh, results um, from the data and the analysis that uh, Harvard GCC um, has done for various uh, tumor types. Um, So I'll start with an overview of um, the data that we have generated um, uh, and our pipeline. So, so far we have sequenced um, um, 14 uh, subsets of um, uh, 14 uh, TCJ uh, tumor types. Um, we have performed uh, paired and whole uh, genome sequencing on a, coverage, uh, on a fold coverage of six to eight. Um, uh, and this was done not only uh, for, uh, to this end, but um, primarily to um, detect um, structure uh, um, variants. Um, so for an, an analysis, uh, we used two tools, um, Breakdancer, uh, which um, uh, uh, may, uh, detects discordant uh, uh, read pairs, and also Meerkat, um, which gives the advantage of detecting uh, the split read that spans uh, the uh, um, junction breakpoint. Um, so uh, for this analysis, I included uh, data on 12 uh, tumor types listed here. Um, in total, um, there were uh, 1,200 um, tumors and their much normal uh, samples, either blood or uh, tissue, that were used. Um, in the majority of uh, these um, uh, tumor types, we had um, at least 100 samples in, um, in each case and for uh, three, around 50 um, sample pairs. So here's an overview of the distribution of um, all the sequence samples um, uh, regarding the number of structure uh, vari uh, variants that were detected. In total, we detected almost 37,000 uh, structure arrangements, um, out of which something like uh, 12,000 uh, events were gene gene, meaning they had uh, both breakpoints within uh, gene region. So the most rearranged uh, tumors were uh, the gastroesophageal, bladder, and melanoma, uh, and the uh, more quiet, uh, as expected, was uh, the thyroid. So we tried to test the specificity of our pipeline. Uh, and we used different approaches. Um, for example, um, um, we gathered the events that um, were called by both Breakdancer and Meerkat, um, so they, we, ha we could have more confidence on those, or events that they could also um, um, be cross-confirmed with RNA-seq um, data. But ultimately, we did also um, uh, lots of um, bench work with um, uh, PCR amplifying of the junction fragment with patient-specific primers. Um, so um, we were able to uh, cross-confirm or validate uh, uh, something like almost 8% of um, the events that we detected. So then, in, in, for this analysis, I included data on um, uh, rearrangements that have to do with the RAS pathway, and I chose to do so uh, because of the significance of this pathway. Uh, we know that there are uh, so many uh, um, tumor types that have uh, RAS aberrations, some to a high extent, like uh, pancreas cancer, but practically almost in all TCGA um, working groups, we hear about um, uh, RAS, RAF aberrations uh, that activate the RAS MAP kinase pathway uh, in these solid tumors. So we wanted to um, examine uh, uh, cases that still have RAS activation, but um, uh, other RAS DNA um, uh, changes are not obvious. Um, uh, and uh, we focused on these 12 tumor types that I've shown you, and we've seen that um, almost 200 samples of what, uh, uh, the cases of what we have sequenced had at least one uh, somatic gene gene um, RAS rearrangement. 
So then the question is, what was uh, the relationship of these RAS rearrangements that we see in, uh, in comparison to other um, RAS aberrations? Uh, but before coming to that, um, just to how we define the RAS pathway. So we heard yesterday about um, uh, the need to compile all the um, given l established knowledge uh, on certain cancer pathways. Um, till we, uh, this goal has been reached, we are using the RAS pathway that uh, NCI's uh, RAS initiative has put together. Um, and in red, there are the um, uh, genes that comprise uh, structural arrangements uh, in our um, ana uh, data analysis. Uh, so that includes uh, not only RTKs that draw most of the attention, but also um, genes in the source ras RAF um, uh, axis, and also genes upstream of RAS that either inhibit, like NF1, or activate um, RAS. So uh, we then uh, compared uh, the, uh, these cases uh, uh, with RAS rearrangement to cases with uh, uh, other RAS DNA aberrations. Um, sorry, um, and before coming to that, I'll just show you some examples um, of uh, the events that we are seeing. Um, uh, so here you can see some uh, Case, um, cases of genes that are well known, like BRAF or RAF1, uh, with structural arrangement, but also other interesting cases um, um, upstream of RAS, uh, including um, um, disruption of uh, tumor suppressor genes like NF1. So, with this uh, panel, um, you can see with arrows um, the breakpoints uh, in each gene, um, and then um, uh, in red um, and blue color, um, expression data uh, as these scores. So now I'm coming to the um, to the uh, um, to the w to the question whether the RAS arrangements co co with um, um, other uh, RAS somatic uh, aberrations. Um, so. Um, this, is the, this subject has already been touched by uh, uh, another speaker yesterday, uh, saying that it seems that um, aberrations within one single cancer pathway seems to be mutually exclusive uh, across different cases. And that's what we also observe here. If we compare uh, the RAS uh, structural arrangement uh, with uh, RAS RAF mutation amplification. So we see. Um, um, that uh, the RAS rearrangements are mutually exclusive to most of um, uh, these somatic aberrations. We also heard about uh, how structural variations can um, um, affect in different ways uh, transcription. Um, uh, I'll show you some examples with structural arrangements that um, affect practically the three UTR. Uh, in some well-known uh, oncogenes like FGFR3 and FGFR2. So here in this slide, I've got an example of um, a translocation uh, in a low um, uh, great glioma um, uh, patient um, where there is uh, a fusion of FGFR3 with LF3 gene. Um, so the, um, the, interesting and the, the interesting part and the beauty of the DNA-based analysis is that uh, you can actually um, see the um, original um, uh, change that occurred in the genome and that resulted later um, in the um, fusion transcript that can be oncogenic. So on the RNA level, uh, we see the fusion of uh, exon 17 to, uh, of FGFR3 to exon 2 of LF3 gene. Uh, but the actual genomic uh, breakpoint lies within the 3 UTR of FGFR3. And due to alternative splicing, um, the final uh, fusion transcript um, um, is uh, missing its 3 UTR. So now there is already experimental data for um, uh, other gene fusions uh, like FGFR3-TAC3, uh, 
and how these are uh, oncogenic because of uh, the loss of microRNA um, uh, control over FGFR3. Um, so that could be assumingly a similar way through, through which this uh, rearrangement and fusion are oncogenic. Um, in a similar way, uh, we detected um, an inversion in um, a gastric case um, where uh, FTFR2 uh, is linked to, uh, to WDR11 gene. Um, so in this case, the um, genomic breakpoint is in the last exon of FTFR2. And interestingly, there is a, a new stop codon within exon 17. And finally, FTFR2 uh, is, um, is losing its 3UTR and acquires a new 3UTR practically, um, uh, part of which is in trans 17 and part of which is uh, uh, a fragment of uh, the 3UTR of WDR11. Um, so, assumingly, um, uh, this FGFR2 is also lacking uh, uh, control of microRNAs on uh, its original FG, um, 3UTR. However, such cases uh, would require experimental validation to show that um, uh, there are a congenic. Um, and we generally felt this, um, this was very important for all the uh, events that we detected, so that's why we initiated a collaboration uh, to try to um, functionally validate uh, some of uh, the RAS rearrangements that we detected. Um, and for that, uh, we, um, we're currently collaborating with uh, uh, Henry Liu and Kenny Scott from um, Baylor Institute. Um, uh, and uh, that group provides a very um, interesting um, and robust um, uh, experimental pipeline um, to, that, uh, that can uh, validate mostly um, rearrangements that uh, result uh, into a fusion transcript uh, that is uh, oncogenic and that drives cell proliferation. Um, so this system takes advantage of uh, a large um, um, uh, set of gateway uh, of cDNA clones um, from which um, um, it is possible to PCR amplify the part of the gene that is needed uh, and then through um, uh, a multi-site uh, LR recombination, they can be, um, um, the final fusion uh, gene can be um, uh, cloned into the destination vector and finally the expression uh, vector. So um, these expression vectors um, uh, are being uh, uh, transfected to uh, by a three cell line uh, a mouse cell line that is normally dependent on interleukin-3. Uh, so once the cells are deprived from uh, interleukin-3, then um, the transformed uh, uh, cells um, can be selected and um, um, the oncogenic um, uh, protein, a fusion protein, can drive uh, um, uh, cell proliferation, which can be measured by an illuminescent um, uh, cell viability assay. So um, some of our RAS arrangements are already part of this pipeline, so I'll show you um, some results um, for the track one, rough one um, rearrangement, uh, which occurs through an inversion in chromosome three in a melanoma patient. Um, so, um, both in, uh, in the whole genome sequencing uh, data and in the RNA-seq, seq, we can see both um, uh, products of this rearrangement, meaning TRAC1, RAF1, and its reciprocal partner, RAF1, TRAC1. Um, however, only the TRAC1, RAF1, which after all contains the kinase domain, um, scores um, higher uh, in the uh, cell viability assay. Um, um, comparable to um, the BCR-ABL uh, fusion and not the RAF1 TRAC1. Um, so the TRAC1 RAF1 can promote cell proliferation in our cell system and furthermore, um, focusing on the RAS um, pathway in its activation, it, it does uh, activate um, RAS pathway um, uh, and here I'm showing you um, um, 
uh, the increase of, uh, phosphor of levels of phosphorylated um, ERK uh, in the transformed cells. Um, um, Henry and Kenny also performed uh, um, an assessment about uh, drug sensitivity of the transformed cells, and they were able to show that uh, track one, RAF1 cells um, do so, uh, are sensitive um, to the MEK inhibitor uh, trametinib. Um, so to summarize, um, RAS mutations uh, are found generally at a high frequency in many different uh, cancers. Um, and we just propose that uh, structural arrangements um, also um, uh, are uh, a mechanism that alternatively can activate the pathway. So in order to have the full view of uh, the RAS uh, activation across different tumors, uh, we could take them into consideration. Um, we've shown that RAS arrangements are largely mutually exclusive to other RAS aberrations. Um, and we're already putting um, our data uh, in functional studies to show uh, which events are functional and which events can be prioritized. So uh, this is uh, a need for uh, all data that come out from uh, studies like the TCGA. Uh, uh, this need will be growing um, uh, in the future, the need to uh, functionally show uh, that our high quality data um, have impact on the patients. So you can join me also at poster number 59 with more questions. Thank you. Uh, I have just a comment to make. Uh, I really would uh, advise some caution uh, uh, towards uh, the thinking that the primary function of this fusion is uh, simply to eliminate uh, three primum regulatory regions. Uh, and there are uh, several reasons for this, uh, certainly the most important one being uh, that uh, the simple uh, overexpression of the RTK gene, in that case uh, FGFR, uh, is uh, of a much uh, less uh, value in terms of oncogenic uh, role than uh, the expression of the fusion. Um, what we typically see is that, in fact, is the fusion gene, which is uh, extremely transforming the fusion protein and not uh, the uh, expression of the individual partner. On the other hand, the uh, three prime gene is uh, clearly very important uh, in providing uh, multiple uh, oncogenic activities, uh, such as uh, uh, homodimerization, as well as aberrant uh, activation of downstream signaling. I mean, the idea that uh, there is uh, a, a simple activation of the canonical uh, RTK pathway here, uh, uh, most of the times, I should say, is not uh, correct. So um, uh, these uh, fusions uh, clearly have uh, uh, novel functions most of the times, and uh, the elimination of regulatory regions is probably just an incident uh, of the uh, genetic rearrangement. Thank you for this input. Um, unfortunately, the, the functional system that I've shown is not um, uh, appropriate to test this. However, I think th th we should test more uh, about what's, what's the functional impact and on which f cancer phenotype they're actually contributing. Thank you, Angeliki. And our next speaker is Julia uh, Shi. Uh, she is going to talk about somatic copy number alteration in uveal melanoma. Uh, 